Action movies for me are the weird ones. Why? Because most of them feel boring for the tropes seen over and over and over again. But once in a while a great one comes out and you even don't expect that. When I watched the trailer I didn't really feel much for the bullet train movie. Of course it was quirky, but at the same time it felt like I wouldn't really be into it. But I was so wrong. And sometimes it feels great to be wrong about something. This was the case. Please be warned about spoilers ahead. Characters in the Bullet Train movie are brilliant. They were the ones which drew me into this, because rarely there are movies where every one of them are so good. Initially Brad Pitt was the one who lured me to watch this movie at all, but along the way I realized that everyone is great here and it was a good thing that there was a lot of screen time for other characters, not just Brad Pitt. They achieved this by giving them all super strong personalities, from their view of life to their attire. Of course, this is not one bit realistic, but if you want to see this movie, you have how to bear in mind that nothing here is realistic, it's all about jokes, style and action, pure form of art. Brad Pitt's Ladybug is an American hitman, and the thing about him is that he is on therapy. He tries to perceive the world with lighter, more stoic way than he used to. Philosophy of smile to the world and the world will smile back. And that's a great comedy, because he is a hitman after all. Although his job in this movie is to steal some briefcase. You see, he is trying to take easier job this time around, but it turns into a pure chaos. Then there is this Japanese Yakuza family. Some mysterious attacker pushed a young boy off the roof. The child survived, but his father and grandfather are out for revenge. They are the most serious characters here, portrayed in this very poetic way, following on or believing destiny and all this stuff. This creates a comedy on its own when they interact with other much more laid-back characters. It's funny when the grandfather wants to tell his life story but Ladybug doesn't want to hear about it. He is like an old man telling his stories to random strangers on the street here, only he's a very dangerous criminal. Then there are Tangerine and Lemon. They are unlikely friends tied by destiny together. People who don't know them call them twins, but they are not twins, not even brothers. Tangerine is a white English guy, while Lemon is black. I didn't find Tangerine that interesting, but trust me, he is not a bad character. My favorite character probably is Lemon, who goes on and on about Thomas the Tank Engine book. He thinks that every human can be characterized with one of the trains from this children's book. He is so into this stuff that he even carries stickers of these characters around. And then there is Diesel on the loose on this train, the most unhinged, crazy and angry character from the Thomas the Tank Engine. They have to find him. Then there is Mexican cartel gangster Wolf. He is the most fashionable of them all, walking around in his white suit. He has his passionate, heartbreaking backstory of someone killing his bride on the wedding day. He is also out for revenge. Hornet is probably the weakest character of these hitmans, but she has a lot less screen time too. There's not much to say about her other than that she brought incredibly dangerous snake on the train. Prince is not Prince at all, but Princess. She is a very cool character playing dumb innocent girl. She pretends that she's a victim in all this, but Princess is in fact the Diesel character Lemon is so desperately searching for. And that's very ironic and cool in my opinion. This movie really knows how to show these ironies of life, and that's why I love it. Why Death is the main villain in this movie? He is a Russian gangster who came to Japan and took control over the Japanese Mafia. He is of course once again over the top character, who likes to play Russian roulette with himself when he is about to kill some important opponent. This is a play with all the destiny stuff again, which I really like. Do you own your destiny, or does destiny own you? These opposing views clashes in this movie often, which is very cool. 
All in all, these characters felt like taken out from some anime. Weird, unique, stylish and so over the top. In this case it was a good thing, because nothing about this movie was realistic. So why not go all the way out? I know that it's not for everybody, but that's the thing about this movie. It stands its own ground, and it is most afraid to take risks, a feature we rarely see in big movies like this. Let's start with the title of the movie itself. It's self-explanatory, right? Wrong. Bullet trains of course are just bullet trains and that's how these trains are actually called because they are very fast. Fast as a bullet. But if you look at the context of this movie the meaning may be interpreted with all the events happening on the train as well. So even the title itself is something interesting about this movie. The bullet train where the movie is taking place is located in Japan and goes to Kyoto, which is a very famous place in Japan. This gives very distinctive Japanese feeling and vibe which I really like. I already said this, but characters also have very distinctive features which just adds to the overall feeling. Although this movie definitely is a comedy, I never viewed it as one regarding its core values. It is too bloody and too action packed, it is more like an action thriller with jokes. And I recommend to bear this in mind if you are going to watch the movie, because as just comedy it's not that good. The greatness comes if you don't view it like that. And here I am onto something, because when I read Wikipedia about this movie, it says that initially it was planned as a serious action thriller, and jokes become funnier if they are not the core concept. But now let's talk about the jokes. They are kind of rough and dumb, I would say, but that is exactly the purpose of them, to be super over the top and ridiculous, not witty and smart. Ridiculousness is the word which describes the whole thing, and that's great. When I read the opinions about the movie, some people found the jokes about Thomas the Tank Engine just too invasive, but that was exactly the stuff which made it so good. Irony of a hitman taking this stuff so seriously is the actual joke. It's not just some fleeing emotion of a moment. It's his whole life and value system. But let's not explain jokes too much, we might just kill them. In the end it all comes down to your taste and preferences. You can't explain joke, you have to feel it. It's good that the bullet train didn't try to be realistic from the start. This is not a thing made to be realistic, but somehow it manages to make you ponder about life more than some dramas. You see, all the things about the destiny, different kinds of people and lady of being lucky because it takes all the misfortunes on itself and it makes you think not about the movie, but about life itself. That's what makes this movie memorable and relevant. And it is full of these little things sprinkled over the core plot of the bullet train. And that's what this movie is. It is a very cool, shiny and funny metaphor for life. The practical side of how this movie looked and how it was edited just added to all the concepts I just described. It is obviously high budget with great actors and there is nothing to complain about. CGI may have looked a little bit cheap, but if you consider everything going on there is nothing too bad. It feels like the look of the movie just followed the feeling and that's only a good thing. The story of this movie was also pretty good. It didn't try to push itself to the limit, but it was smart enough. I think that it was well balanced between all the action and secret motives behind all this. I also liked all the backstories provided for our characters and how it added to the overall plot of the bullet train. It's all connected, you just don't know how exactly, but snippets of these backstories add this understanding. It is cleverly made in my opinion, although I've seen people complaining about this. And yes, there were a lot of runtime dedicated to these backstories, but I always loved those. This also is one more similarity to an anime, although backstories can be explained by just telling stuff or in a different way, 
showing them gives more emotional connection to a character. It makes to care more about what's going on. For me, this concept is the best way. I especially like moments like the fact that the prince was the one killing her father in the end, although it didn't look like her plan would work. It is an overdramatic representation of daughter killing her father, but that's how it was meant to be in this film. The lemon killing prince with the tangerine truck and tangerine truck appearing at the start of the movie almost killing Lady Mug. Also the story about the water battle and how it influenced the outcomes of fights so much. These are things you usually don't think about, but this movie really shows that small things can do a big impact. And it works outside of this movie as well, that's why the movie is so good. <coughs> Bullet Train of course is a diesel. It may not seem like that at the start. But diesels are sometimes hiding their true nature, but once you, you get into it, it's great. I know this is a very subjective opinion, but for me this movie struck all the right chords. I give it 10 out of 10. If you want action-packed light-hearted thriller, there is nothing really better than this. Thank you for watching.